Hello and welcome to another update video about Solana. I have tidied up the chart a little bit, tried to make it a little bit clearer, but overall these scenarios have not changed. Um, only yesterday I made you aware that, um, yeah, we could basically count a five wave move to the upside and that after a successful breakout, yeah, my next target is around 125, it's the uh, December high, but that we should not expect this without any pullbacks and today the first pullback shows. The support levels were already mentioned yesterday. They haven't changed at all because the price is avoided to form another high after the last update. So let's talk about the two scenarios that we have here on the short term. Please be aware that below $84, these two, I mean, one will already get invalidated earlier, but basically um, these accelerated bullish scenarios will be likely invalidated. So the first one will already be invalidated below $93. It will already get less likely below 96.66. And the second one, which allows for a deeper pullback, will get less likely below 84 and invalidated below 79. But let's talk about the two structures. These are the short term structures. Looking at the bigger picture, really nothing has changed. So at the moment, the base case remains that the fourth wave finished here on the 23rd of January. I still see it likely that we get a deeper pullback. Yeah. But at the moment, I give it the benefit of the doubt um, because the structure here suggests either a 1-2-1-2 setup or a wave one and an A, B, C extended or expanded flat. So at the moment, I just would like to stick to the main thesis here. No change, but be aware that below $84, a sustained break below $84 would require a re-evaluation of the chart as mentioned previously. So now looking at the more directly um, bullish scenario, the idea is that um, the market could have topped here in a wave one, first five wave move to the upside. Qualitatively, I can tell you this is not the most beautiful five wave move up, which again keeps the door open for lower prices. But it could be a wave one yeah, in both yellow and white wave counts. So that's the main thesis at the moment. We had a five wave move up. Without an initial five wave move up, I wouldn't even have shown you bullish support levels okay but we have a five wave move so we can consider it i can only highlight it's not the most beautiful one and leave that with you you know how you want to deal with that if you find that too risky it's a very qualitative statement that's obviously very subjective what is objective are the fips and the invalidation points so i would use these for trading not my opinion looking at the wave two to the downside then we could say in the yellow count the market formed an A, B, C structure and completed a wave two here on the 6th of February. A, B, C could be complete, could have completed here around $93. And then this is a one, two setup. And in the yellow count, this could now be another one, two setup. I had it labeled like that yesterday already. I just added this, the microstructure for the future, for the, for the additional waves. So the wave two pullback currently looks like a, an A, B, C structure. And the C, the C wave could be nearly done in this wave two. So we have a support area that's ideal for this wave two in an accelerated one, two, one, two structure. And the support zone is between $103.75 and $96.66. Um, below $96.66, I have to favor the white count, which wouldn't be much different, to be honest. It wouldn't be much different. But um, for the accelerated count, um, yeah, I did, ideally, we don't want it to break below $96.66 and then could see a third wave to the upside to follow and so on, right? Towards 125 plus. And in the white count, yes, we had this wave one also in the white count, but the move down was an A wave, then an overshooting B wave, which topped here on the 10th of February at around $111. And now we could be in this C wave to the downside. It would, however, need to really break below 96.66 to clearly favor that scenario. And to be honest, this, this structure isn't going to be much different. Um, the only way to really differentiate between them is if it's a, a five-wave move down or a three-wave move down. Because even if the white count plays out, often a C wave only reaches the 100% extension level of an A wave. And that would be at $97, okay? that could then be a running flat structure. The problem with the white count is technically we have to leave it more space all the way down to $84. But it doesn't need to come down. The, the thing is with a with an overshooting B wave situation, it's possible that the C wave just ends within that upper box as well. 
So essentially, we don't know where it will end exactly. But um, I can tell you that um, in both scenarios, we could see a, could see it hold the upper box. Well, it doesn't need to. We have to give it that space. That's all I can say. The trend seems to be down at the moment, short term. So we simply have to be watching these Fibonacci levels. And at the moment, I'm leaning towards a bullish outcome. Um, I have no clear preference, you know, um, when we compare yellow or white counts. I think the yellow count definitely has a chance, but I have no clear preference between the two. So I would use it. To, uh, I would use the eighty-four dollar level as a main support. The thing is, we have two bullish wave counts. One is more aggressively bullish. The other one allows for a deeper pullback. The levels are very clear, and only below eighty-four dollars, I would have to reevaluate the chart. And it would indicate then, yeah, still bullish, but a much deeper pullback allowed in wave four. Yeah, so basically then we would have to take a step back, look at, okay, microstructures invalidated, okay. However, the overall uptrend on the chart is still valid. So a similar, similar story here. Yeah? So if we break the first support level or range, then the overall uptrend here on the smaller time frame isn't even affected because it could just be a flat structure. And it's important to just recognize what is the line in the sand between these two scenarios. Yeah, and the line in the sand is, well, you could say 9666 is a, a soft land, soft, no, it's soft line in the sand, but really the invalidation point is this one here at 9312. Yeah, because that's the official invalidation point. Below 9666, however, things are already getting less likely for the yellow count. Okay, that's my update about Solana. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Also, make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Twitter for additional content. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.